Hello and welcome to Theology on Tap. Um, this is going to be first of the three videos that I'm gonna make about how to be born again. And I don't wanna say how to be born again, but what it means to be born again, I guess. The, and you know, there are so many sermons that you could find about Christianity, what it means and whatnot, but you know, I find that the word of Christ and the testament of his disciples are very simple. It has to do with re renewed life, something that is fresh, where we could have a relationship with God so that we may understand what is the right or the wrong thing to do in life and be able to follow through to be in the step of the Spirit of God. Now, in order for that to happen, in order for us to have that relationship with God, I do believe certain things has to happen. Like we have to make a decision. And that decision is not about just saying, I believe in Jesus Christ and everything's gonna be fine, or I believe in Jesus Christ and now I need to follow the rules and the regulations of, uh, of God, of, of church, or you know, any kind of religion. And you, you gotta try your best to follow in order to be, be close to God. You know, it's nothing like that at all. I think God has given every one of us a chance to be or to have relationship with God in a way that could help us to live a life that is worthy of His name, which is good for us and good for the world. So this is the first uh, of the three videos I wanna make. And I think these three things must happen. And I get this idea from Book of John and the first three or four chapters there. All right, the first thing that I think is very important that needs to happen is that we need to have control of the things that's in here, of the mind. I know that everybody says that, that we need to be more spiritual. Well, in order to be spiritual, we need to fight and to understand what goes in our mind first. So the story of Jesus performing his first miracle, I know it is a first miracle, but there is a significant reason for what he, why, why he performed that miracle, because he's teaching us, it's the beginning of his ministry, to say that the very first thing that has to happen is for the water to be turned into wine. That some kind of a transformation has to happen first. All right, so John didn't just put that story at the beginning of the book just to say, hey, Jesus was able to do this, but there's a significant reason or um, a, a spiritual teaching that's there in that first miracle that Jesus performed. And the first one was uh, turning water into wine in the, in the wedding that happened in Cana. And it's, it's not just about you know, Jesus wanting the, the, the party to go on. Even though that's what happened in that story, because party must go on, right? Um, I went to a wedding yesterday and there were uh, a lot of wine and beer flowing and a lot of people were having a great time. You know, it is not as fun. I don't know if you've ever been to a wedding where there's no wine or beer. Um, it's not as fun, right? And it keeps the party going. Anyway, um, the first thing that needs to happen to us is transformation. And this transformation, turning water into wine, uh, it's, it's, it's really up here, that we need to take control of what's in our brain. Now, now simply put, the water represents flesh and spirit, uh, I'm sorry, the wine represents the spirit. Now water, uh, you know, represents the flesh, and flesh, basically everything uh, returns to the dust, and that's what's gonna happen to this body. There's a thing called gravity, and as you get older, you really <laughs> do not appreciate gravity very much because everything about us is being pulled down by gravity. Sooner or later, everything that is physical about us is going to uh, uh, become dust, right? Being pulled down, you see. And Bible says a transformation of being controlled right, by gravity, by flesh, we need to be more spiritual. The spirit basically means to be abiding in God, uh, to have fellowship with God and delight in the relationship that we have with God. That needs to happen. That transformation happened. And, you know, you know, going to church is a great way to show that we want to get closer to God, have a fellowship with God. But it's not just going to church or reading the Bible, but transformation. You know, the way we think, everything about us has to change. Because if we don't have that change within us, then we are conforming to the ways of this world. In this world, there's a lot of evil, obviously, and a lot of times we're being controlled by the things of this world, and in the spirit, we, God wants us to be controlled by the things of the spirit. There's that difference. So the thing that I wanna uh, point out, first of all, about this transformation is the brain. Now, there's two aspects of the brain, and I read a couple of books on brain, it's really fascinating. 
Um, and, and, the, and the truth of the matter is that our human brain is different than any other animal brain because, well, there's the first layer of the brain that is like any other animal in the world. And that part of the brain basically tells us when to fight and when to flight, fight or flight. So, I mean, if you look at an animal, they have to decide, am I going to attack or am I going to defend myself or am I going to run away? Every one of us have that instinct and that comes from the first layer of the brain. Now there are animals that I believe from that book that I read, it says that there are animals that brain only functions in that level, right? And that animals only have that layer of the brain working, you know, live a long time because they don't have to worry about anything else. All they care about is do I fight or do I run? <laughs> so your brain is not um, confused. All right, the second layer of the brain has to do with the way we feel, right? the emotions and whatnot. Sometimes we feel good, sometimes we feel bad. And certain animals have emotions, definitely. Dogs have them, I, you know, definitely. Cats don't have them as much, right? That is why dogs are so much more um, enjoyable, all right? or cuter in a sense. Well, I don't like cats too much because I'm allergic to cats. Um, but, you know, dogs are cute because when they're sad, you know, you, you, there's a connection. Right? Humans have that. You know, a lot of us have emotions. Some of us has more than the other, right? But having that emotion has to do with the third part of the brain, which is, you know, morality. It gets to tell us what's right and wrong. And, you know, religion talks about what's right and wrong. And throughout the years, we learn about what is right and wrong. Okay, that's one aspect of the brain. Another part of the brain is that there is a subconscious part of the brain as well as the conscious mind. Now, uh, Dr. Lipton did an extensive study on this and what I learned from his tapes and his books is that for the first six years of our lives, the subconscious mind is the only thing that is working, absorbing all the information, you know. Uh, conscious mind doesn't get kicked in until about six or seven years old. So when you're trying to reason with a young kid, uh, somebody who's four years old, it is really not possible because the conscious mind has not really kicked in yet. It has not developed yet. Everything is subconscious. Now, Dr. Lipton have also said that the subconscious mind um, is able to process information so much faster than the conscious mind. So that's very important. Like for me, I think I shared this with you before that when I was, um, you know, before I was seven years old, as far as I could remember, you know, I was taught or, you know, I think my parents were joking around, I don't know, you know. Uh, I was always told that I was not smart, I was dumb or I was stupid and think, you know, constantly negative thing. Now that actually goes into my subconscious mind. So when I think about this diploma that I, I should have, well, I mean, I do have, have it somewhere. I should be able to frame it on a wall uh, that says, you know, hey, I graduated from Fuller Theological Seminary with Masters of Divinity. I was ordained in a Christian Reformed denomination, so I should have that um, ordination papers and stuff. I should frame it and post it on a wall, but it's very difficult for me to do it because I don't want to brag about those kind of things because my subconscious mind keeps on saying, you're not good enough, you're not good enough. So our brain, is as complicated it is, being able to process so much information is, is going so fast. A lot of times, you know, we think of things that just kind of pops into our brain. We don't even know why it's there. Seriously, I mean, do you ever wonder why, you know, when you watch, you know, uh, our President Trump speak, some of us are just gung-ho, right? We just say, go, Mr. President, you're the best ever you know, uh, make America great again. But anything he does becomes a very negative thing for a lot of people as well. And do you ever wonder why that is, right? What is in here that's causing us to really love somebody or to hate somebody with such passion? And who put those information into our brain, right? I mean, when it also comes to, you know, um, um, the weather, Right? I mean, there are a lot of people who says that, that we are, as human beings, are responsible for the changes in the weather, and we gotta do what we can to protect the weather and protect the earth. And there are other people who says all those information is farce, right? Which is fine, we could always have a conversation and try to figure out what is the best thing to do, but there are people who believe in these things that are constantly being, I think, manipulated, I think. Right? They are. We are all being manipulated one way or the other to a point we get really passionate about, about the weather change uh, and passionate against it, all right? uh, who doesn't believe in it. So there's always going to be a fight. 
right? Uh, when it comes to marriage, there's male and female, uh, husband and wife differences or uh, different experiences that we had in the past that gets in, in the way of our relationship, right? So there is the, should we fight or not fight? Uh, how do you feel about the circumstances? What is the right thing to do? But even if it's the right thing to do and we understand what's the right thing, why is it so hard for us to do what is the right thing to do? Because you, you know, our, our conscious mind want to do something, but at the same time, our subconscious mind doesn't want us to do it. So there's a constant battle, battle. So therefore, you know, as Jesus said in, in scripture, in this life, we're gonna have tribulations, you know? Tribulations doesn't necessarily mean, you know, earthquakes to all the natural disasters and bad things happening to us, but tribulation in the sense that we're always gonna be in conflict with each other, but mostly we're gonna be in conflict within ourselves. Our brain is always talking back and forth. So, I mean, I always think, you know, say there's some, you know, when it comes to Christianity, because I love Christianity, when we go around telling people we're a bunch of sinners, we're no good kind of a thing, and then when we feel bad enough, we reach out to Jesus and Jesus saves us and, 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 and um, forgives us for our sins and we become righteous, and yet at the same time we're sinners, and that brain can't figure out which one is right. Can we accept both? And a lot of Christians say, yeah, we are both. We're sinners, but we're forgiven, so therefore we're righteous. But we're sinners, but we're righteous. Uh, and why not? So our brain, it, that's when we become kind of like bipolar, right? There, there are times where we react to one information and other times we react to another information. So constant war each other. So when when Bible, when Bible talks about in Book of John about transformation, I think he's really talking about us being controlled by the world and all the stuff that I just talked about and just simply transforming ourselves to focus upon our relationship with God. That transformation, that decision has to come first. And I think this is one of the biggest uh, struggles or the, that we as people are gonna have. I mean, how do we change? How do we change from feeling and thinking a certain way and being able to change that and transform to another. That's, that's kind of hard. Dr. Lipton says, well, you have to fight your subconscious mind by constantly fighting against it, constantly. So if I say, hey, Andy, you're very smart and my subconscious mind disagrees with me, I have to learn to push away the lie that's in us. I mean, that's why the Bible says the truth is gonna set you free. The truth is gonna set you free. But if, you know, truth, has to overcome the lies that's in here somewhere, right? I think, I think that's the beginning of having a right relationship with God. So we all need to be transformed. Now, if you wanna be born from above, right? First thing you gotta do is to be transformed. Don't let the things in here, don't let the things that we have learned that is not true get in the way of what is true. And if we are being infected by the lies of this world and the lies that are in our mind, then we need to allow the truth to come in and push it out. It's not an easy thing to do, but we, at least we're gonna have to take that um, you know, conscious effort, right? Conscious effort to say, I'm going to change. Right? And that, that's exactly what I think Jesus wants us to do, is to say, no longer are you gonna be bound by the rules of this world and, and the lies of this world, and you're going to be transformed. Um, Dr. Lamza, Lamza or La La Lamza? I think it's Lamza. He's, he's a Syrian-born uh, theologian who talks about the culture of Jesus Christ, because you know, um, back then, uh, everybody spoke Aramaic, and the culture was very Eastern culture. It's very different than how it is today, so we need to understand them. And he says that the word demon possession, demon possession was a common thing that they, the common phrase that people used 2,000 years ago to mean that we are possessed by the lies and the gossips of this world, all right? So when you get possessed by the lies, then we do get kind of crazy. And I think there's a lot of crazy things going on in the world where it so much brings about so much hate, all these disinformations and lies that are out there. And instead of being controlled by that, we need to let that go, transform by, you know, t t learning of the truth of what Christ said about who we are in Him, having the right fellowship with God.
right? That's why I think it's important that, you know, for me, one of the transformation I think is important is to do go away from the law and go with the Spirit of God, to let go of our failures and, and celebrate the victory of Christ. Instead of working on my faith, we gotta learn to fade into what Christ has done. See, that's the kind of a transformation that I think that needs to be uh, 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 placed in our lives. That's the beginning of it, right? Um, I hope that makes sense to you, and I hope that uh, this will help you, all right? Let's work on that transformation. Um, next video, I'm gonna be talking about re reformation, all right? But before reformation, let's work on this transformation that needs to be taking place. God bless you, thanks for joining me today. Uh, have, a, have a great one, see you next time.